Right, in this video, I'm going to work on the One Mind TDI Polo project that I've got going. Uh, this is the subframe of it. It's been reinforced some metal plates for if it ever bottoms out. So to start with, I'm going to be putting the subframe mounts back on and the lower arms all in one go and the front anti-roll bar. That might get in, end up getting upgraded at some point in the future, but for now, it's just going to be going back on. This front arm mounts an 18. And I'm not going to tighten it all the way down because I need to be able to get these power steering rack bolts through and probably can't see it on the camera but they're not lined up so if that's tightened all the way up these probably won't line up. Right so now we'll put the other side on and then we'll get the rack on and tighten it all up together. I thought I was going to have an issue with this bolt because where the this plate is welded on here, the weld is just under the bolt. But luckily, when I tighten it down, it does actually tighten down to the subframe and not the plate or the weld. So that was a stroke of luck. So we'll put the anti-roll bar back on here now. All of this is uh, poly bushed, by the way. Now, just like with the arms, I'm not going to tighten those up fully. I mean, they've got a bit of play with the bush, but I'm just going to play it safe until I've got the actual steering rack on. Right, now, this was the first rack that I've ever rebuilt, so I'm not that confident that it won't leak. So, if it does leak, we'll just end up replacing it with a, a new or recon one. So maybe just finish them off by hand. Maybe not, it's not tight enough as it is. Gun must be fully charged today. Right, so now that that's all bolted up, I'll fasten up the two front bolts for the arms and the anti-roll bar bolts as well. So, like I said earlier, these front bolts here are 18s, these two, and then these bolts in here are 13s for the anti-roll bar. these 13s and then we'll get the inner track rods and the track rod ends fastened on. Right so here's the inner track rods or rack ends whatever you'd prefer to call them. This might be worth showing. So as you can see there where my spanner is there's actually a notch in the end of the steering shaft or uh, 
what is it, the rack. So this shaft that goes all the way through the rack is actually notched in the end of it here. You can put a 19mm spanner on it so you're not basically using the pinion gear as uh, leverage. So I've got my 19 on this end. If I can pull up with this side and down with this side to tighten it. Tight. And then obviously do the same with this side, hold on to it. So now it's going to be the opposite way. I'm going to pull up on the adjustable spanner for the rack end and down on the 19. Both of them are right hand thread. Even though I'm, I'm almost certain some manufacturers do them one left hand thread, one right hand thread. Or it might just be the actual rack ends that they do like that but then we've got this little rubber seal for the boot to seal it with which I forgot to put on first that was a stupid move hopefully it'll stretch so now I'll get some one use clips on these um, I can't remember the proper name for them I think they're like uh, ear clips or something ear style Something like that, because that's supposed to be in here. So, put these one use clips on. Don't have to be stupidly tight or so tight that it's cutting into the actual boot. Just needs to be able to grip it and stop it from spinning. Then you know it's, it's got a decent grip on it. Now the front subframe is fully assembled. It can go back on the car. Um, the rack can all be plumbed in as well. Right, so I've found the original power steering pump now. Uh, you can't see it on camera, but it's just in the bottom corner here. So these are the lines and the power steering angle sensor uh, coming from it. Push that one up there. So, they're a little bit, you know, starting to get a bit of surface rust, but I'm just going to reuse them because they're still fine for now. Um, as you can see, I've already started these two lines because they're a bit of a pain to line up properly. But those two are started now. This is the angle sensor that will be going back in. So there's just two screws at the other side of this steering column here. And then that slots in from the other side. Now you can see what I'm doing, so there's two screws here for the steering angle sensor to go into. These two pipes, obviously I've already started them, but they do need tidying up. There's an o-ring on the end of this pipe, so it doesn't need a crush washer in here. These two, obviously it's a banjo bolt, so it needs a crush washer either side. I'll start with this, it's an 18. Let's tighten this up first. I think it's an 18 anyway, 18's working. I might be 17 actually. Try 17, see if you've got a better fit on it. So, yep, yeah, 17's a better fit. So, 17mm, not an 18, sorry. So, I won't nip it up fully yet because I need to position these pipes in the right place. And I think that's probably a 19. Yeah, it's a 19. So, the bottom one's a 19, top one's a 17. And then I think these up here are T25s. Maybe even smaller. I haven't actually looked at them properly yet. So, what won't snug it up yet. I'll just get the angle sensor in place first. Look like T25s to me. So, T25s. Uh, yep. That's those two. Put the sensor in now. Now, I'll just do that one to, so it's just starting to snug down. I'll do the bottom one so it doesn't tighten up unevenly. It's got a seal on it, I don't want it to let water in. So I might as well tighten it down evenly just to eliminate any possibilities of it leaking through my own mistake anyway. Now that we've rebuilt all this, uh, minus tightening these two pipes up, I'm going to move the car onto the ramp now and then put this in. 
Might end up doing it like on the floor with a jack because I don't have a transmission jack yet. But we'll see. Okay, subframe's mounted now. It's only loosely mounted. Uh, I haven't actually fastened it completely up. As you can see, there's still a gap above the subframe front and back. But like I say, it's, it's loosely mounted now so I can get it in position where I want it and uh, fasten it all up. I've got these plates on here. I think there's some sort of reinforcing plate to stop it moving maybe. I'm not 100% on the purpose of these but I've put them back because they were there for fact from factory so that's that. You can see the reinforcing on the front side of the subframe here. And then these pipes I've just tightened up these two power steering pipes. Now they go round there, up and over the axle and then into the power steering pump here which are also loosely mounted. 313s, one there, one there and one at the front there. So I'm going to get it all bolted up tightly and make sure it's all right and then I'll be fitting the bottom ball joints and the track red ends which still haven't been fitted but and then once all that's sorted it'll be able to roll and steer properly. Oh, I've also got to reconnect the steering column up there but you've got to do that from inside and the bottom engine mount or gearbox mount um, that needs a bolt through it but other than that I think we're more or less there now. So other than those bits I've just mentioned, I'm going to do the shot and drop links. I can't remember what they were from, but I think I just added some to the actual size, not to a, a model of car. So I'll measure those up when I, when I come to fitting them and let you know what size they are. So you can order some for yours if you need to, because obviously this is on coilovers, uh, Bilstein B14s and coilover covers to just to try and keep the grime out so I can still adjust them if I need to. And then going to the back, there's the rear shocks and springs, big hole in the boot, which is going to get a plate over it. Um, rear discs are mounted just to stop the wheels wobbling because they wouldn't actually tighten up without a disc on. As you can see the whole underside has been painted and then I've put the tank back in, um, but it's, it's not connected yet. That, those are the fuel lines that will be getting done in another video. There's no uh, heat shield yet. The gear linkage have been put back in and painted over very roughly, I might say. Um, and this is a common fault for the Polos, where it rips the handbrake, uh, the metal underneath the handbrake rips. But that will be getting plated. <clears throat> no, it's not from doing handbrake turns, it's just how I got the car. And as you can see back here, well, you can't really see it that well, but these rear axle bushes are polybushed, both sides obviously. And then eventually I will be getting a rear anti-roll bar that goes along here. Um, I'm not sure whether to gusset the front of the axle, just to try and stiffen it up a bit. I might do, but that'll be later down the line. And then there's a cross brace that goes in here, straight across from these four to these four bolts. Probably make my own cross brace because the original one's just a bit of pressed steel. So I'll probably make a decent, you know, either box section or tube one that goes across there. And hopefully, it, it might make a difference, but I guess we'll see. One day we'll be getting a, a roll cage if I don't get bored of it and get rid of it. But for now, let's just focus on getting this subframe back in, get it all hooked up to the hubs, and then we'll go from there. So let's go over a few sizes here. These subframe bolts here 
and up through the arm are 18s. These two here are 13s. Um, if you need to know, these two are 13s on the exhaust brackets. Um, the two on top of the ball joints are usually 18s or 90s, depending if it's got original or aftermarket ball joint. Uh, same with the tracker ends. And the drop links vary depending on what brand drop links it's got on, but they're usually 16s, 17s, or 18s. Uh, most commonly it's 17s, or at least in my experience it is. So, I'm going to mount the power steering pump up properly now that the subframe is all set. Then I'm going to tighten the bottom ball joints and do the tracker ends. So these ball joints are Lenforda uh, brand and they have 19mm they have 19 mil nuts, which is what I think the standard ones are as well. It's a little trick I use when I can't get the uh, ball joint to stay still so that I can thread the nut on is I put a, a bar or a jack under it and use the weight of the vehicle to pinch this shut so then it hopefully holds the nut. Obviously if it's seized it probably won't hold it and you'll end up having to cut it off but if it's a new one like this it should go on fine. Right, so that's it for suspension now. Just got the drop links left that go between the anti-roll bar and the strut, and the bottom engine mount, which is over here. Yeah, so these are brand new galvanized drop links. Um, like I said, I'll measure them. So from center to center, I've got about. Well, let's do it this way. I can measure it a bit easier. About 165 mil, I'd say. Come on, camera. Anyway, you get the idea. And then total length, just the metal bits, not including the rubber, is about 195 mil. So, I think I probably just typed in something like. 165 mil drop links online and then either found out what model it was from or just purchased some online but these these will do the job if they're terrible then I'll find you out then uh, we'll find out together once it's on the road so all I'm going to do is put this bottom thread through the anti roll bar that way this top thread through the strut this way uh, put one in, put the nut on the other end, tighten that up in a minute. And then because there's no drop link on the other side, I can just push this anti roll bar down until this one lines up. So I'll push it back up again. There we go. Wiggle that in. Now, 
the purpose of the shorter anti roll bar links or drop links is so that this curved bit down here on the anti roll bar isn't hitting the drive shaft. So if you had your, your standard long ones, I think they're about 200 mil or something. So it'd be way down here, which means you, your anti roll bar is coming right down here, which means this curve of the anti roll bar here is more likely to hit the drive shaft. Also, when you're going around corners or over uh, uneven road. So I'm going to tighten that up now and then I'm going to do the other side. And like I was saying earlier, most of these are 17s and this is a 17 nut with a 5mm allen in the middle. So I can just use that to hold it in place. Or if you can get a gun into it then put a 17mm on your impact gun and drive it in. Obviously the bottom one isn't so easy to do so you don't really have much choice but to use a spanner and allen kit. Might help if we steer it this way. Stop it planging on stuff. So that one's solid now. We'll do the bottom one. Right, so that's that's that drop link sorted. I think that's this side of the suspension done now. So we'll move on to the other side, finish that off, and then we'll go and do the steering column. So I've just noticed. These drop links are actually stands plus drop links. So, in theory, they should be good. But if they're not, then we'll find that out together, like I said. Right, so, we're in the driver's footwell now. Uh, I didn't video putting the actual steering column back on, but that, that bolt there, the 13mm, basically, to take it off, you remove that bolt. And then wiggle this this U-shaped bit here off off of the shaft that's that it's on, and then obviously to put it back on, do it in reverse. So you've got to wiggle it back on, and then put the bolt in. But it is quite a task just to get the actual uh, knuckle onto the shaft, and it's it's uh it's hard work without a camera in the way so it's going to be even harder with a camera in the way so i hope i've explained that well enough so i've put the lower engine mount bolt in and uh, tightened it up and then i've also tightened the drive shaft nut so all that's left to do now is put wheels on and then that's all the suspension and steering stuff sorted i've um Sort of straightened the steering a little bit. I think I did about nine turns on each side. And then the steering wheel's straight now, but I don't think the wheels are. So that'll get sorted when the uh, tracking gets done. But other than that, everything's buttoned up now. Um, obviously, I've got a load of wiring and other jobs to do, but as far as the front suspension's concerned, I think we're done now. Or front suspension and steering rather is done. Obviously, I've still got to wire the power steering pump in. That's the uh, for the for the main feed, and there, and then that's the feed from the battery. The offset's pretty even across both sides. Need to pump this tyre up though because it's flat. So let me know what you want to see next on this. Thanks for watching.